good morning so winter is starting how are you experiencing bangalore's winter is it on time i mean based on the climate cycles <coughs> yes this has to be the winter season based on the normal climate that india experiences right so climate change is not so apparent yet we can tell fine so what was there in the past one week <coughs> yes electoral reforms have been new election commission of india correct this was a news who appoints cci components of cci who all are there in election commission of india cec first is chief election commissioner and other election commissioner so you would have even if you have not done lakshmi kant based on what is there in the paper you would have understood it was only single body then was made a double body again a single body so now what is the status of election commission it's a multi member body correct so what is the process used in appointing a chief election commissioner president appoints right process how is a person selected to be an election commissioner is there any process as of now there is no process that's the reason why supreme court is telling you have to find an objective way to decide or you have to tell that what is the procedure you are using to select a particular person as election commissioner correct so why is the independence of eci important why is it necessary for eci to be independent or not listening to what political party is telling free and fair elections or else how it will happen this this person will start favoring the ruling party so when ruling party is favored in any of the elections uh, any of the states it will be like not fair because all the political parties should get equal attention from the election commission right so we also read about one person who is very popular or who is synonymously used with the election commission who is he who is very popular as an election commissioner he is no more he died in 2019 his name was given as an example by supreme court telling not every time people like him become election commissioners so you have to be careful while appointing an ec so who is he for example we have comptroller and auditor general cag heard of this post it's a constitutional body cag means vinod rai okay vinod rai is a person who unearthed 2g spectrum scam based on his uh, analysis of government records he had unearthed the 2g scam so cag means we know right it is like fixed in the mind of people so who is like that for election commission his name was given as an example so you can use it in gs paper 4 tn session heard of it tn session was a person who used the powers given in the constitution to give his best as an election commissioner so there was something called as model code of conduct it was there before tn session it was there after him also but how he has used it he started punishing the political parties if they are making any a violation of model code of conduct that may be ruling party member or opposition party member he was not caring so he was the person who made election commission very popular and he started telling people that election can take place in a free and fair manner and there are many qualities in tn session that can be used as an ideal bureaucrat he was a retired ias officer okay so follow this for news tn session is important for gs paper 4 okay then fine what else was there data protection again data protection bill has been in the domain is there any major changes made even now government has given given the high power here to regulate the data so government will it not use the data responsibly or not responsibly that's the question that's why many people are still opposing the data protection bill even in the new format correct just follow it let it become an act we can discuss on it later then <coughs> yes right to information filing has been made online by the supreme court it's one of the ways of judicial reforms right then <coughs> what else was there yes yes assam meghalaya border issue has been happening which all states are fighting in the borders 
Karnataka, Maharashtra, then uh, Meghalaya and Assam. Assam is having border dispute with all the northeast states. It is sharing a border with all the northeast states. So it's having dispute with them. Majorly it is with Meghalaya. Okay, They keep fighting there all the time. There are some 13 to 14 villages which are sorted out now. Both the ministries have sat and they told we'll discuss, we'll not fight. But when this discussion was going on, now again they have got back to violent methods. Correct? So this is a negative or backward step we can say. Then, <coughs> yes, ISRO has launched a private rocket or we can say sky route. Sky route aerospace has launched a rocket for the first time. It's a private entity. Then, <coughs> At the international level, what is happening? We had been to G20, India had been to G20 summit and we have made that, what are our commitments? So, Prime Minister has gifted so many things to all the G20 members. If you have seen, there was an article in Indian Express, which was telling which gift was received by which minister. So, that may not be important for prelims in match the following, but what has he gifted? That is very important, okay? Patan Patola, it is having a GI tag. All the things that he has given represents Indian culture, Indian traditions. So that is very important for GS paper 1, we can tell. And for prelims, it's very important. What all things he has gifted, we'll see that, okay? Then, uh, there was something related to South China Sea. ASEAN summit is going on. So India and other countries there, uh, trying to devise something called uh, Code of Conduct for South China Sea. Code of Conduct. We don't have any Code of Conduct for Atlantic Ocean. No Code of Conduct for Indian Ocean. Why South China Sea? China, the name itself is telling. China is an aggressor there. It's troubling all the nations, island nations there. So, we want a Code of Conduct to be signed by China in such a way that it will instill free movement of goods there, correct? So, South China Sea Code of Conduct is being negotiated. So, follow up the news and what India's role is there in this, that's important, GS paper 2. Then, yes, COP 27 got extended for two days, correct? Only one major achievement they have done, remaining and all are like small, small initiatives. But yes, COP 27 has been winded up now. Then, we are getting ready for, for I think, COP 15. Biodiversity Summit. In the coming months, we'll get this. Biodiversity Summit is there. So, that is also going to be attended by India now. Then, one more organization was in use, international organization. UNHRC. Yes? UNHRC was in use. He was speaking about the Citizenship Amendment Act and how India is trying to negotiate with this, correct? So, what were the comments made? Just make a note of it. What UN thinks about India's stand, correct? So, what about CITES? This organization was in news, correct? Then, <coughs> yes, free trade agreement. India Australia free trade agreement has been ratified in Australian parliament. So, it's a major step. So, why it is very important? Because it's going to help Indian exporters in a great way, and we'll be getting more imports from Australia as well. And there are two sectors that are not covered in CEPA. What are they? Two sectors are there in which we didn't, uh, we told we will not sign an agreement with Australia because if we start importing in this sector, it will be a loss to Indians. What are they? Yes? One is dairy. Correct? Australia and New Zealand, they are very well known for their large scale dairy farms. Okay, here we have one cow per family in the rural areas, whatever milk it is given, usually in southern states, they are given to cooperatives. So, in that way, we have uh, Amul and all those brands. So, in case of Australia, it's not like that. It's all corporatized. The entire dairy farm is corporatized. So, when that happens, cost of production comes down very much and the per liter rate of Australian milk is very less than Indian milk. So, what will happen if we we'll import this dairy into Indian markets? It will have a big hit on 
prices here milk prices may fall which is in the negative interest of indian farmers okay so we told we are not going to deal, sign a deal when it comes to dairy because we want to protect the indian farmers and australia also was okay with it okay it took a lot of time to make them understand we don't want dairy to be a part of free trade agreement so same is the concern why we did not sign rcep heard of rcep regional comprehensive economic partnership even rcp we did not sign because of many concerns that were impacting indian farmers okay and uh, especially those who cultivate spices supari all those were impacted if we sign rcp so it was not signed by indian government fine so this was the one then what else was there <coughs> yes first biodiversity reserve correct biodiversity reserve is there tamil nadu gets the first Biodiversity Act was passed in India in which year? 2002. Okay, it's a very important act because recently it has been amended by the government to make Ayurvedic medicines easily accessible to the practitioners. Okay, it was very controversial. So follow the Biodiversity Act. You'll study it in GS Paper Three anyway. Fine. So yes, Protection of Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Amendment Act. So this is a very important legislation. We can tell who had started this. or who was the person or brain behind this you need to remember this it's rukmini devi arundel okay she will come in your gs paper 1 art and culture she is a bharatanatyam dancer you have to learn about her then also first in the first nominated mp of rajya sabha women nominated mp you no know, 12 nominations are there she is the first one and also an example of how nominated members can contribute positively to the law making she is the person who was very active in animal protection so she is the person you know it is prevention of cruelty to animals act if you kill a dog what is the fine that is imposed on you you know 50 rupees 50 rupees is the fine if you hit a dog with a stone it is 10 rupees very less amount of fine is there and there is no punishment or imprisonment at all in this case so this uh, legislation is toothless we can tell so now the amendment is making it stronger to you know sensitize people about the importance of animals correct so this amendment act is important for you to study <coughs> what else was there yes be a little louder which bird not audible i'm sorry my ears are blocked i'm not well great not no sorry and completely gone today <laughs> yeah fine so what else was there <coughs> yes 400th birth anniversary of a person who stopped the military from approaching assam just see the name history is not important and also the battle in which he had contested what is that battle it starts from s right so this battle is important it may be there in prelims and who represented the mughals in this battle just have a look at that yes aurangzeb army of aurangzeb fine so this battle is important then what else was there yes kukich in ethnic tribes they are migrating into india and again there is a concern related to sending them back or keeping them that is an issue uh you should be aware of the from where they are coming yes salt tolerant variety of rice from china is a case study it is very important because you know salt tolerance why salt tolerant rice is important what is happening because of global warming in the coastal regions sea level rise is happening correct especially in places like kerala where they grow rice water sea water is intruding into the mainland so what about cultivation of rice there rice will not be able to be grown in salt water so this research of growing rice in salt water is going to be very useful because you know if there is no river water is not sufficient we can bring water from sea and cultivate probably okay so salt tol salt water tolerant varieties of rice india is already doing that icar is having research there is something called avicennia merina so he we also have salt tolerant varieties here but not commercial okay so this is something we can learn from china yes inflation is 6.7% now inflation rate is coming down 
slowly correct you are observing that what about rupee dollar is it improving or stagnant not much changes because dollars interest rates are high only there is no change in that correct then what else was there fine so if we go for the topic <coughs> Yes, so the first one is related to old pension scheme and new pension scheme. This is in news now, correct? So, what do you know about this? Why should pension be given first of all? What is the meaning of pension? You all know that, right? After retirement, after a person's active working age, some secured source of income should be coming and that is called as pension. So, what is this controversy related to old pension and new pension scheme? Some state governments have, you know, gone back to old pension scheme now. And in Gujarat also, the Congress political party is telling, if we come to power, we will take the government to old pension scheme. So, why should government pay pension in the first place? Why? Have you thought of this? Private sector doesn't pay pension, right? Why government is bound to pay pension or why was it paying pension? Yes? future security, security of the citizens, correct? So, for any topic like this, whenever it comes with responsibility of the government, you have to link it with what? Directive principle of state policy. We are a welfare state. DPSP tells that we are a welfare state. So, social security, providing social security to every individual is important and is a great responsibility of the government. Government will recruit till 60 years. What after 60 years? The person has to survive. His family has to survive. That too after 60, there will be more health related issues. Still, they should be able to survive. So, government tells, I will give you money even after your working age ends. Why? Because you have served with me for such a long time. So, old pension scheme, what used to happen? If a person, let's say, is drawing 1 lakh in the last 6 months, 55 to 60 years when this person's age is there, he or she is earning 1 lakh. So, just after retirement, every month, this person will be getting somewhere around 50,000 as the pension every month. Half of the salary will be given as pension. Fine. This is the old pension scheme. So, here, if let's say this main head breadwinner, after 60 years, he was there from for some 3 to 4 years, he dies. What about his family? Family also will receive pension might not be 50, it will be less than 50,000, but family also will receive the pension. The nominee will be there. So, complete security, you know, why Indians had a craze for government job? This is the reason. Government job, 60 years you work, after 60 years, no, nothing to worry. You are getting a very huge amount. This is not just 50,000 plus dearness allowance you will get. Dearness allowance means, dearness means what? Expensive. Inflation. Inflation is taking place. So, products are becoming expensive. So, if you give 50,000 to a person till the time he is alive, it will not be sufficient for his life. So, every uh, twice in a year, dearness, a DA rate will be announced. So, for all the pensioners also, based on this amount plus DA they will be getting. So, it is a very safe income for their life. So, from where is this money coming? 50,000. The person is not working at all. 50,000 is coming means it is coming from the government's coffers. Directly from taxpayers' money it is being paid. Has this person invested this money anywhere earlier? He has no role. That is the employee has not spent even single rupee in his lifetime to save money for his retirement because he knows government is anyway going to bear the burden. Okay. So, what is the advantage of this old pension scheme? What do you think is good about old pension scheme? Yes, undoubted security. So, any case of health emergency at that age can be solved and it will promise a dignified life to a person even after retirement. He need not depend on his children or all those, uh, you know, societal norms need not be observed if a person is financially independent. Correct. Then... <coughs> This advantage is there. What about the disadvantages? Why it is not good? Extra burden on the government, correct? It's too heavy a cost on the government. 
that to after independence what happened we had discussed you no know, life expectancy was 34 years to a person during independence so maximum on an average people used to survive for a very short time what did we do we started national rural health mission we started janani suraksha yojana all this contributed to longevity of life people started living long life now what happened 60 years retirement over 90 years person doesn't die only if something happens run to the hospital treated comes back earlier it was not the case you know 60 years means maximum 70 they would be alive they would die so government has to give huge amount of money for 10 years gradually the amount will be declining but what is happening here life expectancy in india is on the rise so huge burden people are not dying government is going on giving money to them it's a huge burden okay so five fiscal burden is very high because of old pension scheme correct so whose money it is basically today we all are paying tax from this tax we are paying a person who had done work long back it's not going to give any positive result to the society it won't turn as an investment at all okay so because of all these negative reasons government thought that we will form a committee for social sector protection so how many of the people are getting all these things very few okay how many of the people are employed in government sector hardly we can say the statistics tells 2 to 3% of india's population is in government job so for 2 to 3% of india's population what amount of money is being given as tax as pension that is too huge okay so all these things were seen and what about private sector private sector there is no social security again the burden will be on the government only what about unorganized sector construction workers or we can say the people who are street street sweepers there is no social security for them so to bring social security to all of them there was a committee which was formed in 2002 i guess okay so committee for ensuring social security to all these people so this committee had given a recommendation okay every month every year employer and employee this person will give some amount both of them will give contribute certain amount and after retirement this whole amount will be given as a benefit to the employee so this idea was posted as uh, you know employer and employee contribution in case of unorganized sector but government liked it so much that he told no we are tired to give pension to all these people will do that in private government sector also so in government sector also now what is happening under new pension scheme there will be no pension given to a person after 60 years okay you all will not get pension if the central government is still sticking to new uh, pension laws you all not you are not getting pension but what will happen let's say some it is now 14% as of now 14% of your salary you will give 14% the government will give in case of government employee this will be mixed up and paid as a lump sum money to you at the time of your retirement huge amount of money you will be given at the time of retirement so here what is happening half of that money is what you have given half what government has given and also interest will be earned on that correct so what will happen here this money you will get an option should i invest it in equity should i invest it in a uh, bonds that choice will be given to you you have to find someone called as a fund manager okay so this fund manager will decide and tell you this is better equity shareholding is better so invest in shares or invest in bond or it's a mix of both this decision you have to take so this amount of interest that you'll be earning here plus the corpus will be given at the end of the service based on that how you'll use it it's on you correct so there may be people that 60 years who will go and spend money i'll buy an apartment i'll go to a foreign trip nobody will do that so they'll have better options to invest it and make sure every month they'll get returns okay so this is the new pension scheme where contribution it is called contributory pension so employee contributes government contributes and fund manager has a role to make sure the employee earns the maximum amount and then the amount is paid as a lump sum okay so this is the major difference between old and new pension scheme so now from 2004 onwards new pension scheme is there in the government but rajasthan i think has gone back to old pension scheme then one more state chatisgarh has gone to old pension jharkhand and gujarat are also promising so what are we getting you know many political parties opinions if you take you cannot use that well in the answer so this were the opinion told by two experts 
So Arvind Panagaria was the head of Niti Aayog, former Niti Aayog head, and Montek Singh Aluwalia. He was the chief of planning commission. When planning commission was there in the last, he was the head. So such economists are only telling that going back to old pension scheme is going to turn a disaster. But many states are doing it as for elections, for the purpose of elections, they are doing. Okay, so one time poll soap, okay, but revival of pension scheme is sinful. Because government already has so much of expenditure, right? Covid happened, then economy is not running as good as it should be. So all this burden is there. Again, extra money means it's not good. Then bringing back old pension system is one of the biggest rave deals. Rave deals means what? It's being called as a freebie. Just for the sake of election, it is done. Okay. So what do you think should we go back to the old pension scheme? It is good for the people. For those people, it is good. But what these uh, experts are arguing, now this government will go back to old pension scheme and tell whoever is getting recruited now into the government, they will get the pension, like old pension scheme. So when will these people retire? 30 to 40 years later. That time government has to pay them the money. So for 30, 40 years, this particular political party which made a promise, it is safe. Its financial system is not being impacted. 30 years later, when the government of, when the people who join government today, they will be getting retirement benefits. It will be a burden on the financial constraint when 30 years later. So they are not worried about it because, you know, in the immediate future, they need not pay pension, nor they have to pay money as a contribution here. See, 14% every uh, year they have to provide in new pension scheme. That money is saved. Thinking of all this, old pension scheme may be good in the short term from the government's perspective. But in the long run, what will happen 30 years later, we don't know how the economy is going to be. It will be a burden on the government 30 years later. Okay, so that is not something is suggested. Okay, so if you see, these are the differences. So it may come as a prelims question, but still not high chance. But this is something you should know as you all are being part of this. Okay, so upon retirement, employees receive 50% of the last drawn basic play pay plus DA. Okay, so this is all I have explained to you. Yes, minimum 10 years they have to work. After that only pension will be given. Then employees are not required to contribute to their pensions. Government will give the entire money. Then retirement corpus building was not pressured. Correct, you know, you need not contribute at all. So whatever money you are getting in the present time, you spend it. After retirement also you are going to get money. Okay, so that post retirement plan was not focused then yes cfi yeah consolidated fund of india only it is a fund from consolidated fund of india but now when they are doing it yes no they will not be considered as employees of the government they are constitutional posts right so their salaries and all are fixed by the Parliament. So this will not be considered for them. This is only for group A to group D employees, we can say. It's not for the constitutional positions. And new pension scheme, it is coming from not consolidated fund of India. New pension scheme is regulated by PFRDA. This body regulates, so it is not consolidated fund of India. What is the other one? I have forgotten, I guess. Consolidated fund of India, then contingency fund. Contingency is not the one. One more. Yes, there is one where say, all the social security amount goes, one more, what is it? Yes, public fund, correct. The new pension scheme is funded from this, not consolidated fund because governments and both the contribution is done here and it is people's money, it will not be used for any other purpose, okay. So those employed by the government contribute 10%, this is now 14% of their basic salary while their employees contribute up to 14%. So private sector employees can also participate. There is no compulsion, but most of the private sectors also contribute in it, okay? So a professional pension fund manager can ensure that superior returns and a larger retirement. So equity and bond, you know the difference? Equity means you will be investing in the shares of a company, okay? Share means you are the owners of the company. So if the company is making a profit, you will be getting dividend on that. Okay, bond in the sense, you will be a person who has given loan to the company. Okay, bond is loan and on bond you earn interest. So 
so which is better for you the fund manager will decide based on the current market circumstances so that is what is his idea maximum amount of benefits should be given to you as a when uh, i can say person who is retiring so it came into effect from 1st april 2004 okay from then onwards we are having nps there is something called e pran number so all pran number is associated with new pen new pension scheme so remember that okay so that is whoever joined employment after april 1 2004 for them new pension scheme will apply they have to contribute and government also will contribute okay so what are the negatives of this now we'll take the words of the experts again okay so what is it this case study is very important for you whenever you get the example of old pension scheme scheme why not to go to it see the country one should look to see is brazil we know brazil's financial condition is very bad these days so almost 12 to 13% of gdp today in brazil goes into paying pensions 12 to 13% means see you cannot afford to do that so our tax to gdp this is important so what part of our gdp is coming from tax is tax to gdp ratio okay so in india tax to gdp ratio is 16% so out of that 12 to 13% is going to pension means how is it tax payers money half of more than half of it is going to pension so that's not justified and that's not how the economy can be run okay so this example you can use then not more than 2% are employed in the government so how can you take 12 to 13% of the gdp from the tax payer to give that 2% of population only 2% population you are paying such a huge amount of money it's not going to work out okay so evenly distribution this example you can use only government employees are only 2% of india's workforce it is intergenerational transfer okay today youth are paying or today's people are paying the tax whom it is going going to the previous generation correct so this is intergenerational transfer will not have any impact or will not affect in asset creation okay positively so what else is there terming this is by montek singh aluwalia so biggest ravdi what has he told everybody tell about reducing fiscal deficit but nobody speaks of expenses you know we'll have revenue we have expenditure correct so when the gap is high we have two options what is that increase the income or reduce the expenditure when we speak about fiscal deficit we always speak about increasing revenue we don't think about reducing expenditure one of the unwanted expenditure is the huge amount of pension that government is still paying okay so this nobody speaks about reducing unwanted expenditure which is what montek singh aluwalia told okay so it is having a great impact on india's fiscal deficit as well so all these are the reasons that you'll get to justify the new pension scheme and we can tell old pension scheme may not be useful yes it is public fund of india yes non performing assets and loan write off is in news it is related to public sector banks and there has been an article which was telling public sector banks are performing really well in the past 2 to 3 years okay so we'll see that in the next week npa and everything so is this clear old pension scheme new pension scheme if you get any question related to pensions or what are the other pensions available are you aware there are many other pensions given by the government <coughs> widow pension state governments give widow pension soldiers soldiers wives they get slain you know those who have died in the battle their wives get pensions what about unemployment allowance Manrega gives unemployment allowance. That is also kind of social security. Then what about physically challenged? They get a uh, pension. Okay, so all these things are not directly exactly pension, but they are instruments of social security. Correct. So they need not rely on anybody to deal with their life. So this question of social security is important in GS paper two only, and how responsibly the government is doing that. Fine. <laughs> central government employees center state government employees states are taking care that's why we are seeing that many states have adopted old pension scheme rajasthan has done it chatisgarh i think has done or jharkhand and gujarat they are promising we will turn to old pension scheme state government employees state government will decide central government it is completely center's domain
correct yes yes article 39b is about social security so many article 39 i think uh, 43 all these things are related to pensions only 42 indira gandhi national open pension scheme yes article 39b also it can be linked with it's all social security correct <coughs> it's better if you mention the article in your answers dpsp in prelims they'll not ask you which uh, article is which dpsp for fundamental rights there are chances of asking but dpsp is important for you to mention in your essay and gs paper too it is very much needed okay articles in polity are important to write in your answers because state level exams they'll ask you article 365 means what other like that will be there but upsc doesn't ask it it will be very easy because you know you would have led rakshmikan book or any book so many times that you will be sleeping you can recall which page where this article is there so it is not a way to eliminate competition at all so they don't ask such easy questions for you in mains it is very important to remember almost all the important articles of constitution okay fine so just try to answer this will it's something different from old pension scheme new topic it's not visible no read it <laughs> Which GS paper it is asked from? New education policy. Which GS paper can you guess? It is GS paper 4. If you see the term persuasive, pervasive, all those things are it is question of GS paper 4, okay. So you have a topic in GS paper 4 where uh, it is asking about the role of society or we can say the role of education, the role of family in inculcating ethical values of an individual, correct, in making a person's individual's personality how a family, society and education system has a role to play. So in that context, this question has been asked. So what is your opinion? How can education make a person ethical? In schools, hardly they used to teach us moral stories and all. So how do you think that education is having an impact on society and what is there in new education policy that is making a person more sensitive towards the society, okay? So you have to read NEP anyway, new education policy, you have to see the components of it. So, what all would you add to this? How would you examine this question? You know, new education policy has this feature of inculcating ethical values or we can say moral stories from the curriculum itself. From the school itself, you will be taught what we are studying in GS paper 4 now. After degree, we are studying GS paper 4, but for a new education policy, all this will be taught from the school itself. So for the students, they'll be aware of what is empathy, they'll be aware of what is integrity from the school level. Okay, so read new education policy. Why I meant to give this uh, question is, there was an article in Indian Express, okay, related to schools for empathy. So empathy is something that, why do you, do you think there is a lack of empathy in the society today? Is there a lack of empathy among the public within themselves? There is, if you see paper, every day you'll find, at least I am able to read it, every day you're finding a dead body sacked in a, you know, some bag and thrown away. Every day after Shraddha Walker's murder, this news is coming every day. You see the newspaper, this uh, highway, this body is found, that highway body is found, chopped body parts are found. So is it not an example of lack of compassion? violence and cruelty showing its heads in all the way. So as an administrator, what is your role? Once you get a chance to shape India's education system, what measures would you like to take to make sure from the school itself, the child is made accustomed to all this, correct? So this article was speaking about what schools do not teach, correct? What do they teach in the school? What is the purpose of going to school? 
Why do parents send kids to school? One thing they'll tell us, you'll get a very good job if you study well, correct? Then get high marks, competition is there, so then the neighbor's kids, you have to get high marks, this competition is always there. Why there is a competition? Nobody explains to the child. The child becomes confused and becomes one among in the race, correct? So what they have to learn in school, that is not focused anywhere. So this article has very good examples or the language in which the author has put it, you can directly use it in your answers, okay? So in a civilized society, we congratulate ourselves endlessly about our heritage. Indians are proud of the heritage, right? But each generation is expected to make the society better and safer for the next one. What are the responsibilities of a person towards society? When we go to the next generation, society should be a better place to live. But are we leaving the world in a better place for the future generation? First is climate change. We are gifting them climate change and all the uncertainties that is coming with it. We are gifting them technology that they can misuse to the greatest extent. Correct? We are gifting them ideas of depression by putting unwanted competition. So how is the world going? Then hence the tremendous societal role schools have. Okay, Training in understanding the value of cooperative growth, empathy and managing feelings and differences has to start early. Okay, so what is it? There was an article in the paper about staying idle, doing nothing but staying idle for 5 minutes. Is it possible? Child, okay, leave it. Child, forget. Can we sit idle without doing anything for half an hour? We can't do. Something will be going on in the mind. We'll check the phone. We'll talk to somebody. Sit idle without doing anything. So that is not possible. All this are telling we, our mind is constantly in a flux, it's constantly moving. So that is not what we have to teach the future generation. You should teach them how to get bored also. Don't do anything, sit simply, get bored, learn that. All the time providing entertainment to the parents would not be possible, right? So all these things are not taught in the school. Then what do we need? A policy to foster the idea and importance of self in harmony. How an individual has to be in harmony with themselves and also with the society, okay? Then schools to influence at least those children who get to attend. How many of the children go to school? That is again a question. But still those who are attending, they should be taught all this. Okay. So these people are the ones who will lead their communities and societies. They will write and teach. They will build cities, patent new medicines. So when such huge role is there for the future generation, we are making them insensitive through lack of, lack of empathy in education. Okay. Then... <laughs> Yes, there are certain, one positive example you can note here, okay, what are the current generation termed as? They are self-obsessed, narcissism, low tolerance, inability to focus on anything for any length of time, but on many platforms like, have you heard of Milap? Milap. This can be used as an example of empathy in GS paper 4. Milap Foundation, you would have heard because in YouTube, if you try to play a video, in the beginning, some videos will come, you know, my son is suffering from such a great disease, I need crores of rupees, crowdfunding for treatment. Milap Foundation does that, okay. If you see the people who have contributed to Milap, majority of them are youngsters, younger generation. They are the ones who feel pain a lot and they are the ones who have contributed majorly to all this crowdfunding sources. So that gives us an idea that there is empathy, but the education system and the family is not able to tap them and give them a proper channel, okay? So in new education policy or whenever, in when it comes to training of the teachers as well, empathy should be made as an important component in curriculum, okay? Use this Milab. This entire platform is based on taking care of the emotions of the people, you know, attracting the emotions of the people and making, you know, funding certain treatments which are unaffordable. So many people have got cured because of this. It's called crowdfunding. You would have seen this, right? You would have read it also. So you can use it as an example that society is having a lot of empathy. Fine. So there is one more question for you. Again, GS paper 4. How questions can get confusing in GS paper 4 is this. Both of them are from 2020. So what all can you write or what examples will you give to justify this statement is true? <coughs> Correct. 
that is how you have to answer it. You can start it from the below to the international level. There is hatred going on, correct? So how will you justify that? Yes, it is going to be a poison to a nation spirit. Hate speeches, yes, hate speeches and the repercussions of hate speeches that we can tell and national unity is being hampered because of that. Then communal riots is being fueled by hatred towards a particular community. International example, Russia, Ukraine war, Russians, you know, we cannot exactly place it, but how you can use it and twist it in your answer, you can do that. And what about at the international level also? Yes, we forgot to discuss about one major thing. Yes, mob lynching. Mob lynching is again uh, stemming out of hatred only. Mob lynching, correct? What happened in uh, Qatar? FIFA World Cup started, right? So, what was the news related to Qatar? Qatar, human rights violation is a very big question. We have discussed how Indian have been died there and they are not able to, there is no labor loss basically there, correct? So one more thing, it was a very important thing that was in use. Have you read NCRT's class uh, 10th chapter 3, Polity? Have you tried reading that? <coughs> there is a question, there is a topic about two American athletes, okay, 19, I think 1968 Olympics. Two American athletes, one gets first prize, other one gets third prize. Silver medal winner is an Australian. And these two American athletes, they are not fair Americans, they are African Americans, okay. So when they go and win there, America tells they are Americans, we have victory, you know, you have won the medal for America. When they go back to America, what is the citizen status for them? They are second class citizens only because there is a lot of racial discrimination there. So these people in 1968 Olympics, they protested against this double standards US is playing. What they did, they wore a black ribbon in their hand. They stood in the podium and they just bowed down their head. There was, they didn't want to, their owner, you know, the victory is for themselves. It's not for the country because the country has done nothing for them, correct? So not only these two people, the Australian athlete also, he told, I'll also join you here because I know how bad you people are being treated in your own nation. So we are in solidarity with you. So once this incident happened, whole world started realizing how bad this case of racism is there in US and civil rights activism started very actively there. And now we can see little better conditions for African Americans, still things are worse only for them. But it made an international issue that US is not such a good country. There are a lot of discriminations done. Something similar happened in FIFA World Cup also, right? Yes, who protested or who? Yes. Where is there a protest going on related to women's rights? Iran. Iranian team came here to play the football match. And how it is in the entrance, in the beginning of this whole session, when a team is entering, National anthem will be played and these people will respect because they are representing the nation, right? They are representing Iran. So when Iranian team came, Iranian national anthem was played. These people either looked at the sky or looked down. No respect. When national anthem is played, how do we stand? It's a moment of pride for every one of us. But there was nothing like that in the Iranian team. They were not proud of the government of Iran, nor did they want to represent Iran. What about the people of Iran who came to watch the match? They all were holding placards, justice to women, justice to Iranian women, justice to Masa Amini who was killed. So why somebody is trying to do like this? Qatar, FIFA, it's a game, it's a World Cup game. What are, what is Iranian community trying to do here? Yes, to publicize the issue, correct? If something happens, US is the first country which comes human rights violation, it comes to India also and tells you are violating human rights. Are they not seeing what is happening in Iran? So many, you know, younger generation who are minors, who are less than 18 years, they know in Iran that if we keep allowing this government to run however they want, in future we cannot wear what we want for every choice of us, government will be complaining. So we will go out and protest. You know, minors are the people who have been arrested in the large number there. 14 to 18 year old, they are sitting in jail in Iran now, majority of them. So when all such atrocities are happening, 
team of Iran told that I don't want to represent a government which is so brutal towards its women and I want to ask the world to respond to whatever is happening in Iran. Okay, so that is one of the examples you can use like how publicizing things in the international platform like this is going to have a positive impact. Okay, that is there in NCRT. If you see that chapter, chapter 3, I think uh, class 10, you will get to know how to connect it with the answer. So, anything related to women's rights, you can quote this as a very good example, how Iranian team has stood up with the women of Iran in making sure that their liberty is restored. Okay, so use this as a good example. Then, uh, yes. Any other example at the international level for this? Hatred. Yes. China, Tibet. Yes. China and Tibet example you can give. People of Tibet are not happy with what China, Taiwan and China crisis. Correct. This example can be quoted. So why I have told this is there was a statement, there was a small quote that was there in Indian Express. I think you can use it in your answer. Hijab issue is again you can quote for hatred. Just because a person doesn't like a community, they have a problem with whatever the community is associated with, correct? So, violence is like a weed, it does not even die in the greatest to drought, okay? So, violence is very much seen in the society. So, just like how hatred question is asked, we may get a question on violence or peace. Why violence is again important now? It is violence on Ukraine being attacked by Russia. And many nuclear establishments have also started being targeted by Russia, which is very dangerous. Okay, so all these are examples of violence. So, how violence is not or how violence is having an impact on the society and in any topic related to that, you can use this quote. Okay, keep collecting this. It may be useful for you in essay as well. When I mean, there is nothing to write, you can write this quote at least and come for violence. They will be happy this person knows what is violence. Okay, so keep such terms handy. Yes, so this is important for prelims. What all terms you can find here? <coughs> From the starting, if you see, Kangra miniature painting. Kangra is very important, GS paper 1 and also for prelims. Kangra painting is an offshoot of Mughal painting itself, Pahari, Kangra and all. Then, then uh, Matani Pachedi, it's a textile. So, all these things are important, okay. For prelims, they may ask the match the following. It started, it's made by a nomadic community in Gujarat. Then, Patan Patola scarf, 20 people, 20 gifts are given. So, 20 items you have to remember. Ikat scarf is important. Then, uh, Rani Ki Wow, where is Rani Ki Wow? Gujarat, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Based on that, this design is made. Then miniature Pahari painting again. Kinnori shawl is important. What else can you find here? A gate bowls from Kutch was given to France. Pithora art, Pithora art is also a tribal art from state of Chhattisgarh. I think that's all. So, all these are very important for prelims, silver bowl and all those. So, make a note of them and the state they belong to if they are having any GI tag. So, all those things are important, okay. Then, uh, yes. So, this was in news. <coughs> we brought cheetahs from Namibia, correct. So, Namibia is wanting something in return. What is that? Namibia is telling that you have to legalize ivory trade. Sites has banned ivory trade of any kind. Okay, so ivory is from which animal? Elephant. So, what is the uh, IUCN status of Asian elephant? Asiatic elephant it is called. 80% of Asiatic elephants are in India itself. So, what is the IUCN status? It is endangered. Okay. What about African elephant? They are critically endangered. In some places, uh, some countries they are critically endangered. So, what can we learn from this? Because of the ivory, okay. So, what is the difference between these two elephant species? It may be there in prelims because ivory is in use. Yes, uh, I think. African elephants are little slimmer, Asiatic elephants are very fat. 
then what about the tusk here only the male is having a tusk asiatic elephants in african elephants both male and female are having tusk so hunting is on a large scale that both male and female will be hunted in case of india only a male tusker is usually hunted for you know uh, ivory virappan used to do that no he is popular notorious for that tusk tusk can you see a tusk here india only gave this idea we had hosted one sites from where we started putting tusk in the logo and that has been made permanent now okay so ivory so that is itself is telling how important conservation of elephants is for sites so what is the meaning of sites now basically why do we need something like this so before that we'll see the story of this ivory so indian indian government was very much sure in india we cannot tolerate elephants being hunted down for tusk reason we have many religious significance of elephant in the indian landscape so killing an elephant is not considered good for the public and also for the government correct so keeping this in mind india had banned any kind of import or export of ivory or made products neither importing was permitted nor exporting then we made one more strong commitment a few years later what was that domestic trade even within india you are not supposed to purchase or sell anything related to ivory domestic sale also was banned so what is it telling india is quite serious about conserving elephants and you know taking care of the uh, tusk uh, tuskers but what has happened now namibia and other countries they are telling that in sites we have to start allowing for ivory trade why they are telling when ivory you know we have seized a lot of ivory from the smugglers we have a huge amount of ivory then all the elephants who die from these elephants also we have ex uh, extracted ivory so what we'll do instead of burning this off we will trade it in the international market using that money we will conserve the elephants this is the idea that african nations are putting forward telling we are not killing the elephants for tusk but we are already what we are having we are having huge consignment of seized tusk we'll use that to sell and that money is used for conservation of elephants it's for their good only so they are asking sites to give lenient agreement and allow all the members to have trade in tusk but in this particular meeting what was expected from india india was expected to tell a no to this we'll go there and we'll tell nothing doing we are very serious about elephant conservation we'll not allow for this but what happened we did not go we abstained from the voting so what is it why we abstained probably we were grateful to namibia for giving us the cheetahs in turn we are not able to give them what they want so we thought it's better not to go anyway the imp implication will be the same okay in this particular proposal was defeated as well no support was given to this so in sites now this ivory trade is still banned okay so what were the commitments made this was the agreement you know cheetahs just did not come like that with cheetahs we signed all these agreement with namibia which is very important okay <coughs> so one is in india's biodiversity board will have a member from namibia will teach them how to conserve animals there like how we have done project tiger here okay so many agreements are part of this deal so see wildlife institute of india two seats will be given for namibia many agreements are there one of them namibia was requesting is for you know supporting it in sites but india has abstained in that so so what is sites this is very important for prelims many a times questions have been asked in a twisted manner we'll end up answering it <coughs> <coughs> yes to maintain biodiversity sites is very much necessary yes so see when even tiger poaching was there or when rhino poaching was there where we used the where the products used to go it used to go to china mainly because they believe the rhino horns to be 
of some medicinal purpose tiger nails to have some medicinal purpose so art if this demand is created in other parts of the world to meet which countries usually supply their goods so this demand and supply if it is within a nation government of india or any national government can tackle but what happens in case of animal poaching or animal smuggling like that demand is in one part of the world supply comes from another part of the world so if we want to regulate this entire demand and supply thing we need to have an international commitment which is bringing all the countries together so cites us one such commitment okay so especially if you see the paper northeastern states all the time you will find certain primates if, you know, i think hindu has covered it very well in the last two weeks primates you know monkeys and all will be stuffed in certain cages and uh, they have this vehicles specially designed in such a way that even if the uh, you know police come and check something is there it will be like an empty truck but it will have separate chambers well animals are kept and transported from one place to another place so recently such huge consignments were found by indian government and it is in news for that reason as well so why indian government is bound to do all these things because we are a signatory to cites and it is our commitment to stop any illegal trade of animals like that okay so this is not complete ban you should remember that cites does not tell we have to completely ban the trading between animal trading between the countries what it tells restricted it should be in such a way that the animal population will not get exhausted in the coming years okay so controlled trade is allowed and it is having two appendix appendix 1 and appendix 2 that is very important for prelims and recently if you know there is a an amendment made to wildlife protection act last year wildlife protection act was amended one of the schedules in wildlife protection act has components from sites just to uh, you know uh, bring sites into implementation in a proper way new schedule has been added into wildlife protection act so india is more strict or towards implementing this okay so whenever you have to justify this uh, that you know how international cooperation can really bring about changes we can discuss a few success stories one of them is operation kachapa kachapa means what can you guess what is kachapa tortoise okay certain breeds of tortoises are prohibited from trading one of them is star backed tortoise if you see the tortoise its shells will have star star design they are the most smuggled animals in pet segment okay so operation kachapa means we have an organization in india called wildlife crime control bureau it's a part of uh, this wildlife protection act only wildlife crime control bureau is india has started this again to meet its commitments under cites so wildlife crime control bureau it is the one which started operation kachapa then one more was there uh, recently wherein they have gone to all the northeastern places and told people that trading like this is illegal if you are caught hold with this animals then you will be jail sensitization efforts are done so mainly it is wildlife crime control bureau one is operation kachapa then the one more is there related to the pangolins pangolins are the most smuggled mammals in the world pangolins so they are known for their traditional medicine in china again and their meat is very popular among the local tribes so they are traded very much for the skin as well so all these things are being curbed by wildlife crime control bureau okay so find some success stories and tell how this international cooperation is going to help or why we need it as a success climate change again we are seeing right there is no international cooperation but examples like this will tell us that if there is commitment any country in can come together to bring changes in the landscape okay so this is one important thing <coughs> loss and damage fund only one thing that is in news is loss and damage fund okay so what is the what are the ways in which you can analyze a particular cop okay one is mitigation this term you would be familiar by now after reading cop related news mitigation then adaptation and one more major component is climate finance correct so what is the meaning of these two it's very important what is the meaning of mitigating climate change or mitigating the impact of climate change reducing the impact of climate change or to make sure that even when climate change is taking place the communities are not able not impacted much by the climate change okay so then adaptation is 
adjusting because sea level rise is not in our hand now. It's already taking place. And what we have to do, we have to make mechanism to make sure when sea water level is coming up, we should have something ready to make sure the island nations are having an alternative. So that is adaptation because we cannot keep on denying the fact that climate change will happen someday in the future. It's already happening. So high time that we start adjusting to certain aspects of climate change and make it easier for the countries that are impacted the most. Okay. So climate finance, we anyway know it is about who will fund the mitigation and adaptation measures. Okay. Who will fund is the most important question here. So what were the quarrels going on related to finance now? Developed countries will tell. Developing countries are the most emitters today. Who is the highest emitter? We can say China is one of the major contributor. India is a major emitter. But we are expecting the developed nations to do more because they were the ones who started with climate change. Okay. So this time again, this developed versus developing had started, the fight had started. Who should be more responsible and who should be paying out more money? So that is one thing then which kind of questions will be asked we have to see that okay this is in 2022 itself okay so glasgow climate summit was the one which had taken place before 2022 prelims so climate action tracker okay this was an agreement signed in cop 26 but we were not aware of it many of the things that was in news related to glasgow summit was there was a decarbonization alliance there was an alliance for reducing the deforestation. Then uh, India's, you know, so, uh, it was like a resilient island initiative. All those things were in news. But question was about something that is not so much in news, but was a part of the agreement signed. Okay, so whatever is the part of this agreement, COP27, we have to look about it. Okay, so we'll check one by one. So what is loss and damage fund now? Loss and damage fund, what is the purpose of this? Name itself is telling to compensate to climate change related losses. Fine. So, what is the status of this particular agreement now? It is just agreed. All the countries of the world, they have told that yes, we have to make a fund which is going to compensate for the losses. So they say this con fight is going on for 30 years from the time UNFCCC has started. This agreement or this demand by island nations is that do some fund for us, give us some money so that we can get adjusted to climate change. But none of the countries were agreeing to do, do that. So biggest milestones we can say at least the countries are coming into terms with the fact that you know, island nations are suffering a lot and we need to contribute money to that. Okay, so this is the first step. What after this is now the biggest question? Which country will you give money to this? Which type of countries? Developing countries. But there are many nations which are developed but still face the threat of climate change. How will you identify which country needs how much money? What are the parameters using which you are going to identify the beneficiaries of this fund? All those things are yet to be worked out. Correct? We have Green Climate Fund. What is the promise? $100 billion per, by 2020 every year we will give. What is the status now? The fund has not even reached $50 billion. And $100 billion per year is still a very distant dream. So when all the mechanisms are ready, it has a headquarters in South Korea, everything is ready, this fund is not being implemented. So what about this loss and damage fund, will it really work out or what are the challenges there in implementing the loss and damage fund? That is the discussion for next year. Next year they are going to meet and they will discuss. But climate change will not wait, no? COP28, you decide and then I will show my impact. Climate change will not wait. People already we are seeing changes in the weather. All the countries are facing the wrath of the nature already. So that is the biggest question. Climate change will not wait. We are delaying things and there is a committee which is formed to analyze all these questions. Whom to give, how much to give, who will be the contributor to it. Nothing is clear yet. Okay. So just the agreement, that's all. They have agreed to make a fund. There is no major progress on this. 
but again this is landmark because from 30 years they were not agreeing for that also now they have agreed okay so this is one positive thing you can tell then fossil fuel flow what was the controversy last year countries you know especially uh, we can say vanuatu is an island it was telling that all the developing nations should stop coal completely phase out phase out was the word used completely stop coal but this time india has told last time only we told out is not an option we will phase down we will reduce coal we'll go for renewable energy we agree to this this time again they started coming and telling coal 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 india told what coal there are many other fossil fuels also not coal is not the only culprit there are many fossil fuel why petroleum petroleum is also fossil fuel natural gas is also fossil fuel we have to focus on reducing the entire fossil fuels not only coal because you know directly will not be blamed that time coal india is you know important for india's energy security so when they are telling only coal it was almost like a direct attack on indian economy itself so now india has been very favorable in this we are telling don't be focusing only on coal you have to focus on reducing the entire fossil fuels that is out there that is india's stand okay then trilateral alliance this name is important trilateral alliance for forest preservation yes one of the happiest news for cop 27 was brazil came back correct so who is the president of brazil now bolsonaro went that's why everybody is happy lula has come back bolsonaro was the person who sold out amazon we can tell he never protected amazon forest he is you know he is usually considered as a twin brother of donald trump doesn't believe in climate change completely whatever he was doing in brazil similar to what donald trump did in us okay he came out of paris climate pact this person was there in paris climate pact but did nothing okay so here when lula has become the new uh, face of brazil he has come back with a commitment that bring back amazon i will revive amazon it is important for brazilian economy it is important for the local people world also needs this rainforest so brazil is back now means we can have some positive expectations from brazil when it comes to the he has told by 2030 2030 zero deforestation in brazil zero i am not going to allow even a single tree to be chopped that's the commitment made by brazil so these three countries what are the commonalities can you see brazil indonesia and congo what is common between them geographically where do they lie equator they all are on the equator the equator passes through them so they have this equatorial rain forest there which is very important for whole world ecosystem so these countries are now protecting the rain forest as an agreement okay so that's why it is called opec for rain forest this trilateral agreement it may be a prelims question okay who all are the members of this or they may give a statement india is also a contributor remember we have not signed any agreement related to deforestation because it's not possible we have to balance between development and environment so deforestation agreement we are careful we don't sign and basically it's all equatorial country we are a tropical nation then shramil sheik implementation plan so this implementation plan itself is telling every year developing countries will need 4 to 6 trillion dollars to combat climate change how much money is there in green climate fund it's in billions what are they talking about trillions per year developing nations need this trillions amount of dollars for conserving or to cope up with climate change so this implementation is telling we will try our best to give this money but let's lead reach billions then come to trillions then mangrove alliance for climate are we a part of it mangrove ecosystem india is a part of mangrove alliance and the uh, world's largest mangrove is in india sundarbans sundarbans is the world's largest mangrove forest okay so why sundarbans it's important the name sundarb sundarbans comes from sundari tree okay so this is again important for prelims what is the speciality of mangroves what role do they play in a uh, ecosystem what are they called as are they aquatic uh, 
trees or terrestrial crops aquatic or terrestrial sure it is uh, in transition zone they are called as for example how grassland grassland is neither a forest nor a desert but somewhere in between so even this mangrove trees they are having pneumatophores that is the roots that are uh, you know hanging through the air so that when water is filled you know roots are filled with water they cannot breathe they have an alternative for that and even for that we can say they are growing they need muddy water so mud is very important muddy water they are not completely on the land nor are they in water okay they are transition or we can say the uh, species which are in the transition so mangrove what is their importance why do we need mangroves first of all yes it is carbon uh, we can say absorber carbon sink major carbon sink then coastal barrier okay whenever there is a cyclone which is impacting especially the bay of bengal bay of bengal is known for its cyclonic storms so in bay of bengal especially when there are cyclones these mangroves they stop the speed of the wind they act as a barrier so what happens the clouds get you know stopped there and the rainfall happens in the edge itself so whenever there is a turbulence of wind or anything more mangrove act as a barrier and stop any impact from coming into the population here so that is one of the major reasons if we remove mangroves it will result in erosion so much of erosion takes place of soil into the water so all these are controlled by mangroves then again in the roots of mangroves there are many species which are there there are many crabs many fishes survive on mangrove they cannot be found anywhere else they are endemic to mangrove ecosystem so to conserve them we need mangroves then what is the speciality of tigers in sundarban they are good swimmers they are adapt to swimming so even for tigers all these crabs and fishes they act as a prey so if there is no mangrove we will tend to lose the entire sundarban ecosystem okay so that is the reason why it is india is the leader in this and we are a part of this mangrove alliance okay then one more is coronivia joint work for agriculture this was signed few years ago it is revived now for four more years okay what is the importance of this this particular cop 27 for the first time established a link between food security and climate change there was no link or there was no you know importance given to food security as a you know food insecurity may be high when there is climate change are we experiencing that in india now food insecurity paddy cultivations have dropped production of paddy has fallen production of wheat has fallen so what india did we have stopped exporting wheat when we stopped exporting wheat the prices have stabilized here but what about that country somewhere which used to survive on indian wheat food insecurity will be there there will be no alternative for it so climate change how it is impacting the food security of the world that too poorest of the poor nations are getting impacted by that so for the first time this was focused in cop 27 and this coronivia joint work for agriculture making agriculture resilient to climate change has been extended for 4 years okay then food and agriculture for transformation initiative it is signed by fao and unf triple c egypt is the host that's why we have told egypt okay food and agriculture for transformation initiative this itself can be a prelim question fast okay food and agriculture organization in association with unf triple c then article 6 was in news article 6 of paris climate pact many nations have made a commitment and they have updated their targets what are the up updates and what was the uh, idea behind paris pact paris pact we have made it for 2030 right till 2030 india is having a target so under paris pact it will tell every 5 years you have to update your targets okay 5 years are already over after paris climate pact and this year india has told panchamrit we had three commitments now we have five commitments so after 5 years we are going to upgrade it but is it not too huge a time to adopt for climate change that is one of the questions like why updation of the targets is given the such a huge window okay so 
Anything else can you recall related to COP27? There were some people dressed as pigs, pigs and cows in front of this uh, Egypt, Egypt, wherever the host were there. What is the reason? Can you link it anywhere? Vegans, they also went to UNFCCC. They tell that just because of meat production, so much of CO2 emission is happening in the world. So if you want to reduce CO2 emission, ask the world to be vegans. They were coming there to protect the animal rights and also to tell that it is a carbon intensive industry. So demand for meat and all should be reduced. Okay. So one of the dimensions of COP27 was this as well. So you could see when COP27 is happening, so many people go and visit there, telling their own opinion. But only media will cover them, people who are sitting inside, for them it doesn't matter only. And what was the worst thing that happened in COP27? All the people who came there, not only COP27, they come in their private char charters. So whole idea of climate change is only waste there. You know, aircrafts are highly fuel intensive. So individually, all these leaders, 197 leaders, plus all the people who follow them there, you know, secretaries, this and that, everybody come in, private charter. So where are we serious about climate change? If we can call this as an example of climate hypocrisy. And one more word, greenwashing was in news. It has already been asked in 2022 prelims. Greenwashing, what is greenwashing? Heard of this, greenwashing. Yes, you know this, if you see 2022 paper, two statements you can eliminate. Two statements you will get completely confused. What is greenwashing? You will feel both are correct. But what exactly is greenwashing? Speaking more or, and doing less about climate change or just giving an impression that I am an eco-friendly person, I am like this, I am like that, but behind the scene you are something different. So this is an example of greenwashing only. We are talking about climate change and you come there in all private charters eating up so much of fuel and you know exhausting the resources. So greenwashing is basically about doing efforts just for the sake of doing it. There is no genuine commitment to bring down the climate emissions or anything. Okay, So greenwashing is important for prelims they have asked. So you can use it in your mains answer, greenwashing. Okay. Anything else can you recall from COP27? Now biodiversity conference will come. So in biodiversity we have two major protocols. Nagoya protocol and Cartagena protocol. When we will read biodiversity convention COP15, we will discuss that. Okay. Fine. So... Next is our favorite topic. Tell me your opinion on social media presence of officers. Good or bad? Social media presence nowadays, you know, let's talk about those people who have now got into service 2014-15 later on. They are very active in social media, many of them who have the time or who really want to uh, show their work or what they are doing. They are active on social media. So what is your opinion on that? Is it good or is it bad? It is like using technology, we can tell social media is nothing but use of technology in one's life. So how do you justify this participation of an officer in the social media? Forget this case, in social media, being active in social media, how is it? Is it good or think, think how all you can use social media, it is in, in a positive way, in a negative way. You are given a, imagine there is a village in which you are going or let us say there is very lot of difficulty to reach you. There are some people in your office who are from old school, they are like, if you want to meet the DC, grease the palm throughout and then go to meet. So what you will tell, you can put a message in your social media handle, so and so time. I am in my office, come and contact me. Is it not helping the people? Correct? You are trying to be more 
reachable, more approachable to the population. There are many examples of IAS officers who have made themselves easily available to the general public using social media. I can take the example of recent uh, KPSC secretary in the state of Karnataka. KPSC is a constitutional body. The secretary is now conducting live YouTube sessions every week. Is he doing time pass here? YouTube session is not something very small, you know, entire aspirant community, whatever doubt they ask in Twitter, he comes and replies it on YouTube. Is it not a good way of utilizing social media here? Correct, it's a positive way. Then what else can you use social media for in a positive note as a bureaucrat? It may be any extent. Awareness, you are starting to bring some change in your district. So you can use social media to make people aware of it. And usually these people, bureaucrats are considered as what? Role models in the society. That's the reason this profession can, comes with a huge code of conduct. List of don'ts, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Because people are there looking at you and learning, correct? So when you are turning as a role model, you can do many good things, post it in the social media. Ask the youth or just you put it, there are many people who get motivated by that, correct? So that chance is there. You can change lives of so many people by the act you are doing and telling that I am doing like this. So you have to analyze it from both sides. It has a lot of positive impacts, correct? So anything else on a positive note? Yes, schemes can be publicized. Many people are not aware that they are beneficiaries in the scheme, but they all know to use phones, correct? So this is one thing, you know, I happen to have a friend who used to tell, I don't even know who the DC of my district is. So I'm sure or you know, Kelsa Martaila. When a person is there in news, he's working, then only he'll come in newspaper or else you'll not find, you don't even know who is your DC. So you can tell all these as an example where you know their work has to reach the people. So using social media on a positive note is also possible, fine. Then what about the negatives of it? Popularity, how many likes, how many subscribers, my batchmate has got more or I have got more, correct? Competition, you start working for competition than for doing the public good. You are doing it just for the purpose of getting likes, not for your genuine interest is hampered there, not yours, people's interest will be hampered. What will fetch you more likes? Only those content will come on the media, correct? Then, yes, politician can use it as a blame game, correct? It can be misused by the politicians as well, right? Then, what else is there as a negative? <coughs> Yes, without verification, they will be doing something and again, it will be a huge issue. Show cause notice will be sent, then you know, you will have better things to do than focusing on show cause notice and everything. So, without verifying certain facts also, irresponsible posting in social media is done, correct. Then, there is one principle in uh, the syllabus called as anonymity. You know, there is a committee called Nolan Committee, you learn about in GS paper 4. Nolan committee gives certain features of a public servant, okay, ideal features of a public servant. So one of them is anonymity. What is the meaning of anonymity? Yes? Yes, without revealing the identity. So what, uh, why are you paid salary as bureaucrats? Your public servants, basically public servants, correct? You do your work, you will be paid salary. If you don't do your work, you will be paid salary, right? Even if you don't do your work in a proper manner, still government pays you the salary. But what about politicians? How can they come to power? They can come to power only by telling people that I have done this, I have done this, I have done this, you vote me and bring me to power, only then their life will run. Is it necessary for an IAS officer to tell that, see, I have done all these things, you accept me? This acceptance is not required because you are already in the service, you have a secure job, you need not propagate the idea that you have done. So who people are representing, who, who is representing the people in the parliament? Politicians, MLAs or MPs. So they are the ones for whom you are working, political bosses. 
if you see the hierarchy like that, if an MLA walks into your office, however educated you are, you have to get up and give the seat to them. That is a part of the code of conduct, okay. So when that hierarchy is there here, your work should always be anonymous. Who should take credit for your work? It should be the elected representative because they are the ones whose career is based on what work they are doing and what they have been doing for the vote bank. But for you it is not needed. So one of the principles of civil services is anonymity. You have to do your work. Credit should go to the elected representatives. Who is doing it? That is elected representative. Your identity is not important for the public. But what is being done in many cases here? I am the one who did this project. I headed this. I did that. Many of that ideas are coming up in the social media violating this accountability principle, correct? So, anonymity principle. So, anonymity is a very important feature which is hampered a lot because of social media, right? So, what happened in this case now? Uh, election commission, you know, when a, a person is recruited under election commission, they are under the complete authority. They can transfer, they can do whatever they want. It's a complete independent body. So, in this case, UP Cadder IAS officer was deputed to Gujarat before assembly elections. So, what this person has done, have you seen the image? It was there in almost all the newspapers. He was just standing beside the vehicle and he has made a comment that posted as the observer in Gujarat elections. That's all. Election commission got angry and they have removed him from the responsibility and sent. So, what he has told, he has told I accept the decision, but I don't think I was showing off anywhere. The rest, what election commission told, he was trying to show off. Show off, Kelly, he has done that, so we are removing him. So, was it show off or was what was it? What do you think? Was it necessary to put or it, it was fine even if it is put? Not something to be so offensive about, but election commission feels this may be one of the ways in which you are trying to tell something very confidential information to the public. Election process is something that is done in a lot of secrecy. So, when you are publicizing what is done in a secret manner, that offended the election commission, we can think. We do not know the reason exactly. So, this person has told I was not showing off, but I accept your order. So, he has gone back now, correct? So, what topic? This is just an example for us to see how social media can be used in a positive way and how it can be misused. So, if you see recently, there was a I think Jharkhand, there was an IAS officer in Jharkhand who uh, was being threatened by his superiors. Okay, like if you don't do this work, I am going to transfer you to this department. So, take the money and get the work done. What this person did, he has recorded the audio, call record. He has put the call record and you know, we will have our own WhatsApp groups after getting into service. That bitching can be done in the groups. This person is like that. We enjoy doing that, no? Gossiping and bitching. This person has put that audio in the group telling, see how our superiors are, they are not at all sensitive. All these people are so corrupt and this has become, went out of the group and has gone all over India now. It is not a recent one, a few years ago. So, it became very controversial telling, you have criticized your whole hierarchy and who told you, who gave you the authority to record an official declaration like this. This person tell it's not official. He was threatening me. He didn't write a letter and threaten me. It's a call. So, I had to record it. But, you know, against him also Shoko's notice was uh, given telling that you have violated the code of conduct. So, read the code of conduct very well. In GS paper 4, when you are trying to answer something, there are many statements which you make out of emotions. But then if you see that is against code of conduct. In many case classes I have seen, you know, asking uh, like if you do like this, what will you do? Tell sir, ma'am, I will go to media and tell. Can you do that? Are you allowed to approach media for anything? You have to take permission from the superiors. You have to tell, this is what I am going to speak in the media. This is what I am going to address. Apart from this, I am not going to speak anything. Once you get permission for what you are going to speak, only then you can approach the media. If you go to media and start telling my boss has done like this, like that, gone. It is against the code of conduct. Okay. So, read code of conduct and it will be very useful for your answers. It will help you what not to do in your answers so that you can, you know, evaluators know what is code of conduct. So, you cannot end up writing something that is a violation of code of conduct. Consumption of alcohol in public, violation of code of conduct, many such rules are there, okay. So, just follow that. It is important for GS paper 4, <coughs> anonymity. Then, uh, 
what else do you think is important for a public servant features anonymity is one then anonymity is one then what else makes an officer in a good or ideal officer accessibility in these days they have to be accessible to the public then accountability yes they can be accountable but quality i am asking accountability is i think we can take it as a mechanism of a system an administrative setup will give accountability so as an individual what are the qualities compassion is important correct what about integrity integrity you have to use in your answers what is integrity follow that right so what we believe in we have to implement that you know we should not speak one thing and do one thing and integrity the best definition for integrity is what you do when nobody is watching you so all those things are important features then integrity is one anonymity is what is expected then what about political neutrality correct we are called as permanent executives are you aware of this bureaucrats are permanent executives whichever government whichever political party comes to power you are going to stay here so once your favorite political party comes you will be very enthusiastically working next political party you don't like and you're like no i don't believe in your policies not so enthusiastic in working can we do that no what is our work people have elected them and sent so who has decided what should be the policy people have decided so what is the work of a civil servant to be politically neutral this is one important thing and code of conduct you should know you should not be a part of any political party you should not be a part your family members should not join any political parties without the permission of the government this is one code of conduct you should know then what else is expected emotional intelligence is very much needed that too when we are dealing with such a diverse population emotional intelligence becomes an important ingredient correct to bring a balance between work and family we saw the example of an ias officer who had carried the baby to the meeting or we can say to a speech so again work life balance so that becomes important then and there was a controversy about an ips officer getting done pre wedding photo shoot in uniform 2 years ago it's very popular these days no pre wedding photo shoot in ips uniform so again code of conduct violation was done it's for your personal purpose you are not doing anything here for the public so you cannot use the uniform in a wrong context correct so he was punished for that violation of code of conduct i don't know what law was applied there but it was a violation fine then uh, one more example can you recall any other examples where there is a show cause notice against the officer for we may think it is very silly but it has a lot of impact on it it some practices are called as unbecoming of a civil servant so all these qualities will rewind all the efforts that you have done to reach there so that is unbecoming of a civil servant so what are they one of them is not being uh, we can say anonymous correct any other example can you recall you can use it in gs paper 4 yes yes bihar sanit bihar uh, ias officer i guess no secretary or something she had told that if, if we give everything free to you you will be misusing it in a very negative tone she had told and she also asked public apology for that that is a violation because the statement was so insensitive against a small girl that it is not something you know she represents the government there so speaking something like that is against the government so use this there is no emotional intelligence will end up in activities like this then and you know there are, i am not able to recall the name i was told this uh, episode by my mentors there so you know there was one person i think in bihar cadre okay wherever whichever department you post him he'll you know go to all the records find something wrong there try to rectify things there okay so he was a person whom none of the politicians like one or the other thing fault he'll find out and bring out the scam from the politician side so they all were tired of him they went and put him in animal husbandry department what will you unearth their punishment it's like a punishment transfer animal husbandry then uh, there are many traffic traffic police department if you are made director to that you have no work to do 
So punishment transfer. This person was made the secretary of animal husbandry department. What scam got unearthed? Fodder scam, Lalu Prasad Yadav. So if you really want to work, whichever department you go in, you can give your best. Okay, so this can be a positive example of how, which kind of officers we really need. Correct, whichever department you place them, they will always give their best. Correct, then uh, prison department, uh, it is better not to use controversial figures, it is not justified because we can take the examples of certain officers whose credential is verified completely. For example, Ashok Kemka, can anybody tell he is wrong at any point of time? It is established that he is an ethical officer. But there are many contradicting facts related to certain IAS officer which is still not verified. So usually avoid telling that. I was told this in the interview not to take such people as role model because their work is really inspiring. You need such officers as well. But when there are many cases going on related to the efficiency or we can say there is some issue going on whether you know there was some pool constructed by her in the uh, residential of the DC which is sub judice that is which is still being read by a committee. So when the credentials are not completely verified by any source, it is better to avoid certain controversial figures in the answers even in the interview. Okay. So you, I had told in one of my mock interviews for the state that what inspired you to come here? I told some officers like her. So do you mean you want publicity? That is why you are doing this. That was the question I asked the board, I was like not publicity but the work that they are doing. So after the interview they had told that you know do not use some names which is telling you that for publicity sake you are doing something. Okay, So it is better to avoid certain examples where you know it is not established that this person is really ethical. We know many things which is happening there it is ethical but you know it is not justified that. Correct? So then what else can you recall any other latest examples? Yes, Bilkis Banu case of IS officer had commented telling, personal opinion was told in the social media. Then again they had to give a disclaimer that it is my personal opinion not the opinion of the government. You should be very clear because IS officers also write in newspapers. You would have read many times in Hindu and Indian Express, it is written by secretaries. Then they will write views ex uh, expressed are personal, they do not represent the government opinion. That clarity has to be given or else it is a violation of code of conduct. You are representing government, government is telling one thing, you are telling other thing, public will get confused. Correct? So that is to be avoided. Then there was an IAS officer who tried to apply for VRS. Why? Because he was very close to a political party and this political party told, you just leave this, come and join my political party, we will give you a ticket, you can contest in election. So this person had not completed the retirement age, applied for VRS. So what the DOPT did, Department of uh, Personal and Training, they told okay fine, we will give you VRS but give back the money that you had taken for foreign loan, education loan. You did education in foreign university, right? We had given that to you. So give that back, then take VRS and go. Because what is the purpose here? You are jumping from one part, you know, you are shifting your profession but entire money is already, government has funded your education. You are not helping the government but going to the political party. So there are examples like this as well. So read the newspaper in case of all these bureaucrats and what the examples you are getting. It will help you learn what not to do in future, correct? That is the best way we can tell. Fine, so the next topic is very simple. We have discussed this many a times, I think, but in detail we have not done that. There was an article in Indian Express which was telling what all India has to do in the space segment, correct? So India is a leader in the space segment, can we tell that ISRO has made so many achievements which is unparalleled in world history, you know mom especially, such a low amount, single attempt only the satellite was launched and US say it is I think 10% uh, less I think, I think 10% of what US has spent on MAVEN. We have only used that much amount for Mars Orbiter mission. Then what is the feature? They have discussed about the world space industry as well. 20th century means when? 1950s onwards, correct? So in the whole world we can say space was something which was government sponsored. So what example can you give? 
USA and USSR, they were the ones who led all the technological advancement back then. So, they were the Cold War era. So, they used to compete in the space segment as well. First, US sent a dog, right? Recently, this was in news. I think uh, about the dog, Laika or something was the dog's name. They sent dog. Next year, they told, I'll send human only to space. You are sending dog. I'll send humans. Here, they start Roscosmos. Just a few months later, NASA comes up. Competition, complete competition. And who will give money? Private sector was not dominant back then. So, completely it was government sponsored. Okay, Public sectors were the ones which were heading the space segment. So, what was the purpose for which they were spending money on space? <coughs> Technological advancement we can tell. Then for developmental purpose, utilizing technology, then uh, military. Satellites were needed for tracking the military activities of the rival. So, during Cold War, many satellites were launched to spy the opposition side. So, for this purpose, satellites were used. But what happened gradually, we started with the private launch vehicles, okay, private. In the 21st century after 2000 and onwards, private space started coming into US. First, US started with the private space agencies. Then even Russia is having private. So, can you name a few private SpaceX of Elon Musk? Then, Blue Horizon, Blue Horizon, right? Amazon's. Blue? Blue origin, correct. Amazon is having this. So, we can analyze this in satellite. Okay, I think SpaceX is having some 3000 satellites, private satellites. Who designs satellites in India? Correct. If you see this PSLV like this, it will have four stages. This is the rocket that is taking the satellite. Okay, in the fourth stage, we can place the satellite here. This satellite will go and orbit around the sun. So, this is the satellite and this is the launch vehicle. Correct? Satellite in India is not developed only by ISRO. We give it to IITs. If you see the paper recently, some school girls have also designed satellites. Many play, you know, that it's not confined to ISRO. We are also having satellites which are manufactured by many entities in India. It, it is outsourced, we can tell. Based on the necessity, satellites are launched. So, SpaceX alone is having 3000 satellites in space already. India just now sent a rocket private. They already have satellites, private satellites. Blue Origin is also having a plan to deploy 4000 satellites for its own purpose. Okay. So, that is the update. And launch vehicles, Arian is there. SpaceX, what is the launch vehicle of SpaceX? Falcon. Falcon, correct? So, their launch vehicle or this particular rocket that they have that is being developed. Then what about cooperation? In 21st century, this is one major update according to the article. What is this? Countries started cooperating. I am able to manufacture so and so per equipment. I will give it to you. You give this to me. So, it became an arena of cooperation. Space segment started turning as an arena of cooperation between different countries. Okay, In these four areas, this article has been categorized. Then one thing is India's journey. How did we start with ISRO? Have you seen Rocket Boys? Mom, what is that Mangalyan movie is there? No, Mangalyan. So, all those things will give a very good idea. Though it is done from a commercial perspective, you will get a small idea of how we started about with the space journey. So, back then it was completely public entity, it, the, the whole money given to ISRO had to be discussed in the parliament, then money used to be allocated. So, discussing in the parliament means there used to be many people who used to tell, give food instead of that, why are you burning so much of money into space? It is not going to give you any benefits. So, many out of, you know, because of we can say the scientific temper of our first prime minister, we can see ISRO taking shape. If it was somebody else who was not believing in science probably. ISRO would not have taken shape. Okay, So, somehow budget allocation was made to ISRO and till recently we got help from USA, we got help from USSR as well. But again, we got caught in the Cold War politics. Brains from the world coming from India, we will only design. It took a lot of years, but Vikas is India's cryogenic engine used in GSLV now. Fine. So, because of all these things, India had to depend on some countries, but now ISRO is self you know, it can 
self sufficiency it is earning running in profits it is hosting the rockets and telling that you give you hire a rocket to send your satellites pay us money so it has become the commercial wing of isro is antrix antariksh in hindi antrix in english antariksh is space correct so antrix became the commercial wing and now what is happening isro is the only entity which is working in space but what has happened off late the importance of space has increased but why did government of india wanted to spend money on space we had many many pressing issues to be addressed during independence why did we choose space what was the motivation to start isro first thing is for india you take any policy you have to tell about development how it is helping development we got telemedicine correct because of satellites telemedicines came we were able to have a good place in india pakistan war military aspects as well so for the development purpose india started isro and also an element of pride we are very proud of isro telling its self made organization correct but what this article is telling that we should come out of these two narrow idea of isro not only for development not only for pride but we should start considering space as a business now why business private have come means it will definitely be a business so why should india lag behind we should start thinking of space as a business and start allowing private entities here to run it as a business so what in the entire space economy if you see space economy in the sense all the money that goes into space what is isro's contribution just 2% of world space economy only 2% we are just proud of to what isro is doing only 2% is the amount but what the prime minister has told we want india's isro's share to be 5% will isro alone be able to do that it's not possible so we have to open up new and new markets for private segment okay so there are five place four ideas that the article has spoken about so one is space as a business idea not just development so when it is a business we need the private participation so what has government done for encouraging private what have we done we have startups related to private correct but again there is a question here startup means they'll not come up with huge capital correct they'll have a very small amount of money that they are investing so what this article was telling we want huge companies tatas you know and one more godrej godrej has always helped disro in designing certain technicalities in the satellites so why not extend this and godrej is a very rich company you know when you add this it will be a big boost to india's gdp startups profits are not so high correct net worth of godrej is more so what this article was telling we need the presence of huge private entities not just startup skyrock skyroot no it is also a startup a new startup i think it's got investment from other countries as well so it will not have much capital to expand so we need huge corporations to enter into the private space segment then international cooperation we need aware of quad right quad is having a space uh, sector also all these four countries they want to frame the space policy in such a way that it will enhance the peace in indo pacific region so this is a new way of cooperation in the world where space is being one way or one negotiating or trading item correct so this will enhance relationships and it is going to be useful for peaceful space then foreign investment it will be a source sky route is being funded by singapore it gets most of its fdi from singapore so fdi is anyway very much needed for india's foreign exchange so opening up space sector for the private is also going to help us increase the foreign direct investment fine so yes one of you mentioned about space junk what is space junk heard of space junk what is it <coughs> when pslv or any rocket is launched first the last part will get disintegrated 
then all the parts will get disintegrated only the satellite will roam around in the orbit where will this disintegrated parts go they will be in the space only so what happens if this unwanted part come and clashes with the satellite satellites will become dysfunctional what if a very important satellite we and pakistan are at war india satellite will come and be hit by a space debris like this so what will happen to us we may lose the war here so it's about the life of so many people many technologies are relevant you know reliant on the satellite today so space junk is the biggest problem that we are facing so what is the solution to this solution to space junk Gaganyaan mission, if you have observed properly, what is the idea behind Gaganyaan? Imagine in PSLV only we will send a human. Can we send human in PSLV? We can, but he will not come back. Will PSLV come back? Have you ever read PSLV left satellite and came back to India? No. PSLV does not come back because it disintegrates and gone. But now what we are using? We are using atmospheric re-entry. That is, we are launching come back go leave satellite there and come back to the space come back to it will fall in the ocean so in this what we are doing we are creating capsules which will go to the space leave the satellite there and we will plan it in such a way that it will come back and end on earth here we can you know uh, dispose it off in the scientific manner so that is called atmospheric re-entry we are having this idea now and most of the space organizations are wanting to go for the sustainable satellites. They will go, drop a satellite and come back, which is very practical. So, that will reduce the space junk. Then, uh, DART mission. DART mission was about destroying a asteroid, correct? So, in the same way, we are having plans to target space junk and destroy them. Targeted destruction of space junk is being done to make sure satellites operating capacity is not impacted because there are many cases where China's satellite pieces have hit India's. They will start fighting here. No, satellite junk is not under our control, right? But if this junk happens to be from China, again, ground level also fight will start. So, all these are the problems related to space junk. Yes, in future, if more private segment is put into this, space junk is going to be very high. But we are finding an alternative for that. <coughs> Why else is space important? Have you heard of fronts in a war? fronts in a war, one is army fighting on the land, navy is fighting in the water, air force is fighting in the air. New front is space war. You can send soldiers there into the space, war can be done there. Who owns space now? India space is just above India. India map is like this, in space also we will draw India map, is it like that? Can we own the space? It is something which belongs to humanity as a whole, correct? So, this whole idea of who owns the space, having army, China is having plans of, you know, uh, taking the army there, all the countries are having this. So, India also wants to get ready in future, if we have to start an army there, we will go there as well. So, in opening up new wars, so we have to be responsible in using space, okay? New arena for war will start, so there again mortality will be high, so it is not something that is going to be working out okay so space can be misused as well then why else is space important resource mapping mineral mapping is required we have insat insat satellites resource sat to map the minerals and using this we are trying to find the forest cover and conservation related to that correct so that is important then <coughs> why else is space important do you think That's all. Yes, so what about first question is why are we exploring Mars? Reason we are searching for life, evidence of life in Moon, Artemis mission, uh, US NASA's Artemis mission is there. So, why are we doing that? Mineral exploration, correct? Mining, mining of minerals is very important. Shortage of minerals is there. We do not have minerals based on the demand here. So, mining of certain minerals for that moon is very much important. Lunar surface is having a lot of minerals. 
commercially exploited thing them is practically possible if you know we'll have daily ships going on between them so mining mining of minerals is important then what if global warming becomes real all of the earth gets eliminated we need second house there is only one planet earth but if we start finding evidences of life in other planets we can relocate there that is another option in future for humanity when earth is not sufficient other planets are promising okay we can also know how earth has originated based on that also we can follow the instincts how mars is also going to get destroyed fine then uh, what else is there related to space there is a movie called elysium it's a science sci-fi movie in this what happens climate change has already happened in the world and uh, whole world earth you'll see it in brown color there is no green or blue patch at all whole world is in brown color people will be there will be one fruit which a person will find they'll be fighting for it because nothing to eat right but what happens there is a capsule which is designed by the rich countries this capsule is somewhere in the space there it will be completely green they'll be having all the resources eco friendly everything but what is happening here on earth earth is completely gone so this was basically speaking about how rich countries are never going to be impacted by climate change even if it gets impact they'll have alternatives like this but it's the poorer population who are going to get impacted by it a lot okay so cop27 and space also you can link how important it is fine reusable rockets by spacex correct even spacex has started this reusable rocket correct then how is precision farming related to this so i have brought only these many topics for this week anything else is important if you can recall we shall discuss yes international year of millets correct so how are millets different from the conventional food high nutritional value they'll have a lot of fiber content and uh, think from cop27 why millets are important from climate change perspective yes less water they are not demanding like paddy paddy is very demanding i want this much water only i need this much rainfall only only in certain conditions i'll grow millets are not like that you grow millets anywhere it's possible so when millets are being promoted so many points are being addressed here one is climate change we are thinking about making agriculture climate change resilient even if the place which is getting good rainfall today in future if they are going for lesser rainfall we have an alternative crop millets can always be used in grown so rural poverty can be eliminated through this correct rural poverty is a good way to you know uh, eliminate the rural poverty uh, millets are good then one more area it is important nutritional security millets are very rich in many micronutrients paddy we know is only giving carbohydrates what about wheat that is also carbohydrates but these two form the major part of indian platter today who taught us to eat only these two if you go to your villages paddy is something that has started recently people have not <coughs> habituated to having paddy from their childhood correct unless and until you are from a very rain bearing place you know in places there are many districts in the state which are traditionally drought prone but today irrigation system is provided there they have cultivated paddy so when you grow paddy you eat paddy so what has happened public distribution system are you aware of millets are given in public distribution system they are not given so in there have been a report which has told that this garo kasi jaintia hill in meghalaya they are the ones who cultivate a lot of millets as a part of their traditional lifestyle today if you go and see their homes they also have biryani pulav as their day to day food item millets gone so who taught them rice eating pds government only reached everywhere started giving rice and wheat so that has impacted our agricultural patterns that has impacted the food habit of the indian so now the effort is to reverse all these things and go back to the traditional platter correct so one more reason why millets is important we are having a lot of communicable diseases these days 
lifestyle diseases are being uh, you know increased because of carbohydrate consumption so millets are the ones if you see any of the supermarkets you will find people buying oats ragi, ragi oats all these things you know people are getting health conscious so when they are becoming health conscious promote millets let them eat good for the farmer good for the people good for the nation as a whole so 2023 i think right international year of millets so india is a person who is promoting it so how many millets are you aware of yes bajra then ragi jowar then foxtail millet so many names are there different types of millet so keep them handy and see the places of their cultivation which state is highest in which particular millet this can be important in prelims and uh, what about what acreage of india is being grown for millet that is important it's shrinking area of uh, millet cultivation is shrinking reason is pds okay so government is having certain schemes to increase millet cultivation state governments for example in karnataka they have this uh, siridhanya yojane there is something called siridhanya means millets so in the scheme they are giving some uh, compensation to the farmer if you switch to millet crop per hectare so much of amount money cash transfer is being done by the government all of them is a part to encourage consumption and in many states as a part of pds also they are encouraging giving millets in schools they are giving millets as the mid day meal scheme so government is putting efforts now major effort lies in attitudinal change people have to accept rice is gone now new time old we have to go back to the olden time correct correct international year of millets is important then yes telecommunication bill has been in use it's related to regulation of telecom sector and uh, you know there is whole question related to uh, controlling the web uh, what is that ott platforms this was in use after covid pandemic came people started subscribing to all the ott platforms and then government thought okay people are putting all the content possible there so i have to go there and regulate so ott platform also there are certain uh, ways in which government is trying to regulate them why is it more important now because we saw in shraddha walker's murder case he told i saw that web series got inspired and i killed in that way so when there is no regulation for what content the public is consuming we can see such negative impact on the society correct so then what else was there is it possible for the government to be everywhere and check everything it's not possible it is increasing the burden of the government already and ultimately it is coming on your head why your head you are the ones who will manage you know ultimately who gives out all the services of the government district level it's the collector so whatever law comes there nodal agency for implementation is the district so over burden there is so much of work with the government new challenges are also coming up okay tell me one thing disaster management comes under which list of the seventh schedule of constitution agriculture is state list then crime prevention law and order is state list disaster management comes under which list which list yes can you think did government of india while making constitution think i'll get issues related to disaster they had not thought it is coming under residuary list there is a list apart from these three center state and uh, concurrent residuary list is there so everything that is not coming under the three residuary so disaster management is not something we anticipated for then what about uh, cyber security that is also coming under the residuary list because it is a law and order issue but again it's not part of the seventh schedule okay that is not part of the state list then uh, there is one more topic yes elections are going on somewhere in our neighborhood which country is going for elections over election is over i guess nepal nepal election and i think there is a hung assembly there so confusion who is going to hung assembly or coalition. government is coalition government so hung assembly that is no single party got a majority there so again we have to see coalition means which side it is tilting china or india that question always comes up then there is one community which is uh, 
common between India and Nepal. Okay, they are all the time, there are some people staying on this side of the border, some people are on that side of the border. So, for us, their protection is important. For Nepalese people, their protection is here is important. And related to Nepal, we are having issue related to this Agnivir scheme also. We have told, we will recruit certain Gurkha soldiers into Agnivir. So, that commitment also we are negotiating with them. They are fine with giving recruitment under Agnivirs, correct? Then Gorkha regiment of Indian Army becomes important in this case. Yes, so anything else are we missing out? We still have time to discuss. Okay, which paper you have to read? Which paper do you all follow? With your preparation, only one paper is sufficient. You will not have time to read two paper. One paper only takes two and a half hours. I think two and a half hours it will take for you in the beginning. Six hours means half a day gone in one paper, newspaper only. Where will you cover GS? So, give more focus on GS right now. But don't miss newspaper because you have to understand what all to cover. And you should be able to link. Okay, this is something I read in GS. It's there in newspaper also. To follow that link, you have to read newspaper. One is sufficient now. After you complete your complete syllabus and revision, you can add on the newspaper, another extra paper, okay, in addition to Hindu. So, that is always suggested because many editorials in Indian Express are really good. You will get new perspectives from that for your mains answer. For prelims, again, newspapers are not sufficient in any way, okay. So, first cover your GS very thoroughly, especially NCRTs, be thorough with all the basics. Then only newspaper will have an importance. Till then, don't go for two, two newspapers. One is enough. Read it and go and make notes of some examples. That is more than enough. Okay. One paper is sufficient. <coughs> and there are many good editorials in uh, newspapers like Live Mint. Live Mint also have good examples. You know, good. Uh, if you keep reading something like that, Google only will send you suggestion. Read, read, read. So it's better for you. Let them suggest. And if you, if you find something is very relevant for GS papers, you can always read them, correct? So, read things in internet so that they give you suggestions for UPSC. It happens if you start browsing only related to that. AI is working very well with respect to Google. So, you can use that in a better way. Fine. So, which subject is going on for you now? Geography, nice. So, cyclones will come up now. So, why is was Bangalore receiving rainfall last week? It rains in Bangalore during this time usually. Retreating monsoon, correct? So, which place receives rain during this time? Tamil Nadu coast and interior, south interior of southern India. Okay. Then, which branches of monsoon are there? Have you done that? There are two branches. One is Arabian Sea branch, Bay of Bengal branch. Bay of Bengal branch only comes back. That is retreating monsoon. Okay. So, geography is going on fine. And now again we will get cyclones going on. Cyclones will be forming in Bay of Bengal. Again that will be in use. Who gives names to cyclones? It happens in the ocean. Which country owns ocean? No country. So, who gives names? No, they will tell when name is given, this country has given this name, but who will give? There is a list maintained, okay. In this list, everybody would have given, I think, seven, seven names. So, by rotation, names will be selected. In the Indian subcontinent, cyclones are named in that way. This was asked in UPSC mains, GS paper 1. Who names the, yes, there is a list from which it is picked and all these countries contribute to the names of the list. Okay, so, yes, so anything else we should discuss from the last week? Yes, Rajiv Gandhi case, uh, convict, I think, government has given a petition to Supreme Court again to reconsider the decision. So, we have to take it from an ethical perspective. It is important in GS paper 4 and 2, justice, provision of justice, correct? Fine.
So, okay then, meet you in the next class. If there is anything else to discuss, let me know. Are we forgetting some topic in the previous week? Fine. So, half an hour early class for you. So, utilize it for better purpose. Thank you.